We're good? We're good. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jos Weijers. I'm, uh, I'm a member of Tool. That's the open organization of lock pickers. And open organization of lock pickers means we pick locks as a sport without force, without uh, uh, physical damage, and normally without keys. That's fun. Uh, as a sports lock picker, we have to uh, uh, live by a couple of very simple rules. Rule number one, do not pick locks that you do not own or have explicit permission from the actual owner that you are allowed to pick it. And do not, and if we can help it in any uh, way, shape or form, we do not pick locks that we rely on because at some point you will fail and a piece of metal, uh, your lock will fail or uh, your, your pick tool will break and then you have a piece of metal in your lock. So then you can't open or close your front door. That's the wrong thing. So if we can help it, we refrain from picking important locks. I'm also a member of Hack42, which is a hacker space in Arnhem. That's the Netherlands, that's Europe. And Hack40, um, Hackerspace did a tour in Europe once and uh, they simply described this Hackerspace as the most awful space in existence. And of course I can only agree with that. Um, to start off we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do a tiny clip. I hope the audio picks that up. You hear that? Show of hands, who thinks this is a good idea? Depends <laughs> what your intentions are. Correct, because I think it's a neat idea. I don't think it's a good idea. Well, one point, uh, th this is a commercial by a Belgium insurance company. So if your house gets looted afterwards, at least you know who's going to pay for it. Um, and I don't really get this clip. Because I don't know where you guys live, but in my neighborhood, it's way easier to find a locksmith than a 3D printing facility. <laughs> but whatever. But the concept is kind of cool. You, you see what they did? They put a key on a turning pedestal, and they basically made a 3D scan of it. For you guys who, who've been to the previous talk, uh, it's, it's not rocket science anymore. But they put it on a turning thing to 3D scan it from every site. Well, like I said, this was from a Belgium insurance company, and Belgium is in Europe, which is not America. And why do I emphasize that? Because in America, if you're looking at normal household locks, so not the, the, the commercial big, big numbers, but on an average front door, you'll basically get a Schlage or a quick set, and that's it. So, so basically, you can choose between two brands of locks. So then you don't have to 3D scan your whole key. You only need a bidding code. And of course, you have to figure out which of the two locks that is actually on the door. And that will get you a quite good hit rate. So in America, you can do stuff like this. There are companies, this is uh, Schlüssel. What they ask you to do is take a, a picture, one picture with your smartphone, of your key. Just on a white background, click, do that. Mail us that picture, we'll mail you your key. I probably would not use my home address for that. <laughs> but the idea is cool. So for a fiver, you get a 
duplication, you get a dupe from your lock, far from your key. And they actually wrote some neat software for it, because they don't just copy it one on one, but they scan your picture and figure out what the actual code was, not is, was. So if you have a key that has some wear and tear, so the, 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 the depth would be a one, but it, it turned out to be a one and a half because you used it a gazillion times, then the copy they sent you will be a factory cut number one. So if you have an old key, there is an, an above average chance that the copy you get in your mail, in your physical mail, will work better than your original. I think that's kind of cool. I think that's kind of cool. So that's from one picture alone. There are more companies who incorporated the same business case within their business case. This is Outbox. I believe they work in Manhattan. And what they do, they're basically a reverse mailman, a physical reverse mailman. So they show up at your house and take away the paper mail, the snail mail. They take it to their office, they scan it, and they mail it to you by email. So you can read your email while being abroad. And they probably sift out your spam mail, but I'm not sure about that. And they say, well, you can sign up to our, uh, uh, to, 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 to our service by sending us a picture of your keys. It depends on where your mail is at. <clears throat> is it in a mailbox that we need a picture of that mailbox key? Is your mailbox in your garage that we need your garage keys? And so they have all sides of, of, of several uh, scenarios so they need the key to your gate or door, but they stop at your front door. They do not want to enter your house. Well, it be in America, I guess they're afraid of getting sued or dogs or shot or whatever. So, uh, but so, so there's a privacy issue that, that they don't want to get into. They just want to have your mail because that's the service. And well, like I said, they only need a picture of your keys or your key or whatever, how much layers there are. So with one picture, they can make a key. Is this new? No, it's definitely not. This is a picture from, I'm not sure about the year here, <clears throat> 2008, University of California did, uh, did a project called Sneaky. This is a camera with a kick-ass lens. What you can do with lenses like that, you can take pictures from far away. There's a terrace. On the terrace, there's a table. On the table, there's a book. On the book, there are some keys. It's a good book, though. <clears throat> if we look at this key, because that picture is kind of taken straight on, you can see the bidding of the key. I'm not sure you can decode it, but you can see it. If we take uh, uh, a cutout of that picture, and if you look at the head of the key, so the stuff that you normally put your fingers on, you see that that head has a peculiar shape with the triangles cut out of it, and uh, anyone who knows locks will go like, that's a quick set. And knowing it's a quick set, and so we can know or we can figure out what the dimensions of that head should be. So what we can do is keep on altering that picture, cropping it and shaping it and, and moving it about until that head in the picture is the cor has the correct dimensions. If we figure that one out, then we know that the rest of the key also has the correct dimensions, and we can just decode what, the, what those depths are. And then we can run it on a key copying machine and just make a working key. I just learned this. Uh, mind you, I'm not from America. I'm from the Netherlands. And we do things different in Europe. Um, I learned, but you probably already know that, that if you get a new key from the Home Depot or whatever, normally there's a number stamped on the key. That's the direct code I don't think that's a good idea. What I mean with direct code is if you punch that number into a key copying machine or a key cutting machine, it will produce that key. So not showing your keys is even way more important than I'm telling here because the code of your key is on the key. Well, it already is, but it's kind of obfuscated, but now it's just printed on it. That's, that's not security. That's, I, I don't think that is. Okay, so visually decoding a key code from just a picture. That can be done. 
This is a snapshot from a hacker conference in the Netherlands. And what you see is a 3D print of the key that used to be the handcuff key for all German police officers. Okay. Cuffs are normally keyed alike. If you think for it for just a second, you might go like, that's stupid. But actually, it's not. Because um, if you get arrested by cop number one, and he cuffs you, and he puts you in his vehicle, and he sends you off to the station, there he hands you over to another officer, and it's kind of neat that he's able to open your locks, right? Because otherwise, that's going to hurt in the end. So it's quite normal for a country to have all the handcuff keys keyed alike. Maybe per, per, per department that's different, but, but that happens. Okay, this is, so that's the German key. And a friend of mine called Ray, he's a member of SSDEF, which is basically tool in Germany. He just loves his handcuffs. He has a gazillion of them, and of course he had this key. Well, also the plastic one, but also the metal one. So he was walking at the crime ground, and uh, he saw police officers, Dutch police officers, patrolling the grounds to see if we evil hackers do evil stuff. And he saw the handcuffs, and he was like, that's a lips, because he instantly recognized the brand and make of that, uh, of that handcuff. He was like, that's the same brand and make as the German cops. So he went off to this police, he went, he went on to this police officer, he was like, dear sir, can I try my keys in your handcuffs? And the police officer said, fuck off, and turned his back to him. <laughs> turned his back to him. <laughs> okay, this is not the most clearest picture in the world. So I'm probably, it, it, it probably will not be that easy to actually decode the key the code to the key from this picture. But I don't know if it's that clear, but you can see it's a high, low, high, and a bit lower. That's ish. But if I compare that one to the original, huh, that's a safe guess that this is the correct key. So even from a very crappy picture, you might not get all the info you need, but you're still leaking information. So even from this crappy picture, I can kind of assess that this is the correct key. And a bit later, he asked another police officer if he could try that. And sure enough, that key is not just key like for all the German, but also for the Dutch police officers. So, he, so if you ever come into a pinch in the Netherlands, here you can download <laughs> the police cuff keys. So that's fun, ain't it? It's fun. So only one picture was enough to basically open all the handcuffs. Fun stuff. Okay, what I'm looking at here is a typical clean desk environment work, uh, workspace. But I also see a key. So what we did for references, we put a, a, a coin next to that key. So if we print that picture, we know how big the key is because we know how big the coin is, right? And, of course, this is flat on, but if the coin wouldn't be round, I also know how to crop and, and to, to, to torque that picture to actually get a round coin and from the correct size. So if, the, if that's done correctly, this one is also the correct size. And if we know it's a crappy lock, and this is a cabinet lock, so we kind of know that it would be crappy, if we take that piece of paper and put a sheet of metal behind it and all go all kindergarten on it and stay within the boundaries and lines and cut it out, with some luck, <coughs> that will open your luck. <laughs> so what we have here is a piece of material that's vaguely the shape what the key should be, and sure enough, it, it opens. So on crappy locks, the crappier it gets, the easier this is. Well, like I said in the intro, <coughs> well, in the beginning, that in America you have schlegs and quick sets and other stuff. So the other stuff is, well, a lot of that other stuff is quite good. I mean, in America you have very good locks. You also have very crappy locks. And there's nothing in between. Because in the rest of the world, well, at least in Europe, that's what I know of, is you can have shit locks and great locks, but you have a 
multitude of choices between that. So you can get an okay lock. That's hard in America. So you either get a crap lock or a good lock, and there's nothing in between. Well, guess what? The crap locks are kind of cheapish, and the good locks are very expensive. So a normal consumer lock, you have an above average chance that that's utterly crap. And so I'm not saying this might work, but if you go to the Lockpick Village, you can well try it out for yourself. Those are normal, unaltered locks, and you can just open it. But, okay, so, so that's without any prior knowledge. But of course, some locks are more important, and uh, some needs to be kept a seat with a bit more. Because your key is basically the password to your front door, right? It's just a code you punch in via, well, in, in this kind of roundabout way, but it's a code you give to your door, and then it opens. So a couple of years ago, uh, a story arose that you were able to buy the key to the New York subway system online for $27. And when I say the key, I mean the key. That's the master key. So you have a system of keys, and uh, a key will open a door, but the master key will open all the doors. Okay, for $27, you could get the key to the subway system. So initially, people go, like, oh, driving the subway system for free, riding the subway system for free. Yes, you can do that. You can get everybody in for free. Actually, you can make sure that nobody's get in for free because you have access to technical cabinets and stuff like that. So the story was these keys should not be in the open, and especially be in New York, so it's terrorist. So, and, and, well, kind of true. I mean, you don't want this key to fall in the wrong hands. So they made a story about it, and of course they say, this key should not be in the open. <laughs> this key. <laughs> and just in case that is not enough info for us, they showed that key on a known grid. <laughs> okay, that's not a clear picture, but it's damn clear enough. Come on, guys. That shouldn't be the case. That's wrong. So by saying, this key shouldn't be out there, they put it out there. And they keep on doing stuff like that. This is a, a, a... If you take your plastic money, your credit card, and you dump it in a machine, and then you punch in numbers, that's money, right? So if I want to uh, sniff that data, if I want to start carding, uh, in the old days, what you had to do is mold some plastic thingy and look at convincing and put it over... The, the credit card slit and make another keypad that, that kind of looks like the original, enough to fool the normal user. But what if that box, and either that be an ADM or uh, some, 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 some money vending thing, if I can get inside that box? So then I can put all my crapware inside the box. And it will look very convincing, it will look like the real thing, because guess what, it is the real thing. The human, the, the, the human interface, the, the human machine interface, is the original thing. There's no way of telling if, that's, if you're getting sniffed at that point. That's what this story is about. Let's bring in NBC Bay Area's investigative reporter, Vicky Wynn. Vicky, seems unbelievable that one golden key, so to speak, unlocks so many pups. We were surprised, too, Raj. You could call it the key to the kingdom. It is a remnant from back in the day when all gas station pumps were made with this to make it easier for inspections. And now... These are just providing easy access to a very lucrative crime using high-tech technology, and in the end, we are all on the hook. Hidden behind here, a new Bluetooth-enabled Bluetooth. skimmer that can rip off your credit or debit information in seconds. This universal gas pump is easier for thieves to install these new skimmer. <clears throat> is that easy to decode? Kind of. And I even know which blank to order. So I need a Y11 USA. That costs about 50 cents if I buy one. And if I buy them in bulk, they're way cheaper. So don't do it like that. If you run the story, you don't have to show, I think, now. Let's look at an, another clip, if this one is working. Like I said before, in the, US, uh, the New York subway system, that was for sale, and people ran it. 
those keys are, well, th that was a master key to the subway system. And because sometimes a master key system is handy. Uh, for example, well, New York is a big town with high rise buildings. Um, if one of those buildings is on fire, you kind of like it when the fire department can get in, right? And of course, they can knock your door down, but they don't want to do that on a regular basis. So if the whole city would be keyed alike, for a safety perspective, it would be cool. From a security perspective, not so good, because anybody who owns a building could get into any other building. So what they did, they started using knock boxes, which is basically a tiny safe that is put outside the actual facility, and that has the, the key to that building inside it. And that box has a lock on it, and all those boxes are keyed alike. And, well, that kind of makes sense. And that key is uh, every uh, uh, fire station car thingy, uh, fire truck, that's the term, sorry. It's not my first language. Any fire truck will have that key. So that's a good thing, because if, if that wouldn't be the case, then they would need a separate truck for all the keys that they need for, well, for the town. But of course, those keys, they, sh they need to be cut. That's done by locksmith. And this particular locksmith, he did that. He, he, he was one of the key cutting guys from the, the, the fire department and the police department, whatever. They went to, to him, well, among others, to, to him, to have those key cut. At some point, he went out of business because, well, he was done working. And he's starting selling off some of his surplus stock. Well, the apocalypse might be coming because a New York Post reporter just scooped a legitimate story. An intrepid reporter for America's third dumbest paper has found a slightly disturbing item for sale on eBay. Former locksmith Daniel Ferraris sold the undercover reporter a New York City fireman's key ring for $150. The keys give the owner the ability to control elevators, circuit breakers, subway entrances, and traffic lights all over the city. They essentially become the key maker from The Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> so media being media, I mean, you only need one news source to actually write a story and the rest will copy it and maybe alternate the story a bit, but that's what happened. So a lot of newspapers start r running this story. And, uh, well, nice wide background, straight on pictures, thank you very much. Some even blew it up a bit more. And they also added exactly where that key can be used, where it should be used, and what you can do without it, or what you can do with it. So this one should be, the left one should be what you could do, shut off power to city hall, or a police station, uh, uh, well, cool. That was a fire elevating. You could send all the elevators in the Empire State Building to the ground floor, trapping everybody inside. Fun stuff. Uh, this one is a traffic light key, so all the lights red, all the lights green, total chaos. Uh, that's the fireman service key, 1620. Uh, you could take over the subway or one World Trade Center. This was uh, some time ago. And actually, we've seen that one before. That's the, that's the subway system key. So inflation kicked in because this is way more expensive than if you just buy that. So don't go for the set, guys. And... That's a fire alarm box, so you can all alarms on, on all alarms off. Terrorists shouldn't have these keys. Here they are. Well, actually, this, this paper did think about it for a bit. Because what they did, they contacted a locksmith. Just not the one in the movie, but a locksmith. With a question, we're going to run this story. Is it okay if we show these pictures. And this locksmith went like, I never duplicated keys from a picture. Nope, can't be done. <laughs> Run it. So, if you ask advice for an expert, first you need an expert to figure out who the expert is, right? <laughs> so that's, that's, okay, let, let's take it a bit closer to home, well, my home. This is the logo from Tech Inc. Tech Inc. is a hackerspace in Amsterdam, and which is also in the Netherlands, same as my hackerspace. And of course, being 
hacker spaces together in the same country. It's not really rivals. It, it's, it's more like siblings. And siblings do quarrel, right? I mean, we poke every now and then. And in Amsterdam, they got a new hacker space because they, they, they moved places. Of course, they, that, that also includes a new front door and new keys. And one of our members thought it would be a good idea to, to troll them a bit. So he contacted one of their members. I was like, you have new keys, right? If you can just send a picture of that key, because we have a, a, a guy that, that knows his keys, so we can assess the security of your front door. <laughs> and of course, this showed up in the mailbox with a coin. It's a two euro coin. So it's not, again, not the best picture in the world, but enough to decode it. Because what you can do is just trace this shape. <coughs> Can't reach it, but we got the idea. Then you end up with something like this, right? Okay, we fed this in our newest, and, well, our newest machine, which luckily enough was not a coffee maker. And, uh, yep, where you go? Why is this not working? There you go. And it was a, a cutter, a laser cutter. So we put some, some, some plastic in there and ran it. Well, first we label it, because of course we have a ton of those, of those keys. So it says test tech ink on the label, very good. Mind you, this was a new machine. Ventilation didn't work yet, so you see fumes going out, so do not inhale. Burn, 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 burn. So this is not a key. This is a key-shaped piece of plastic, which is about three, four millimeters thick. That will not fit in your keyhole. At least, I sincerely hope that that will not fit in your keyhole. But what you can do is put this on a normal key duplicator. Here's our plastic thing. There's a blank key. And make that key blank in the correct shape. But of course, as I said before, we're sports pickers. So I'm not allowed to pick a lock that I don't own or have explicit permission from the actual owner. So I couldn't try it. There's no way for me to try that without breaking those laws. But of course, being a hackerspace, which is all open source and share and share, we put this on our public wiki, including all the details and everything. And uh, yeah, so apparently that was the correct key and it did work. And, uh, well, trolling is nice, but of course the day after we came there with a way better lock and 60 spare keys and installed it for them. So all was good and well, we love each other to death. But uh, yeah, a bit of trolling is always good. So social engineering is enough to get all the details you need to open doors. Well, we knew that already, but maybe not in this one. Again, Europe. This, ooh, um, th there are subtitles. This is in Dutch, well, in Bel Belgium, which is, well, Dutchish. And uh, the story is that you could buy the keys to the speed cameras. Well, actually, you could buy the locks to the speed camera. I have no idea how that works. But uh, apparently, you were able to do so. It's and It is. And... Uh, well, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at the clip. Regelmatig wel e-mails van mensen die een en ander beweren. Eigenaardige mails, maar ook opmerkelijke. Zoals deze e-mail die we gekregen hebben. En dat gaat eigenlijk over iemand die beweert dat je heel eenvoudig met een sleuteltje de flitspalen open krijgt. Dus stel je voor, je wordt geflitst, je hebt een sleuteltje. En leef je uit om de flitspalen of op de besturing van die paal. En dat je ook die slotjes heel gemakkelijk kan kopen. Ik uh, onderzoek dat even. En in Brussel, en we beginnen natuurlijk bij de slotenmaker. Sleuteltjes en een cilinderslotje. Um, volgens de mailschrijver zit dit in de flitspaal. En kan ik met die sleuteltjes de flitspaal openen. En hoeveel heeft dat gekost? 
Dat heeft 14,23 euro gekost. Als dit werkt, voor 14,23 euro, dat is opmerkelijk goedkoper dan een boete van een flits. Dit is hij dan, deze paal. Er zijn in Vlaanderen acties geweest om deze flitspalen uit te schakelen. Men heeft erop geschoten, men heeft in de hand gestoken, um, men heeft ze zelfs afgekleefd. Maar eigenlijk is dat volgens onze mailschrijver allemaal niet nodig. Want het geheim van deze paal zit in deze kast. Deze robuuste kast is de aansturing, de sturing, de elektronica, de stroom van die flitspaal. Euro, dit sleuteltje, dat je naar deze combinatie ons kan maken. Ja, klep je gaat hier open. De sleutel past. De deur gaat open. Hier kan je zelfs gewoon uh, handmatig en automatisch aan en afzetten. Laten we dit maar uh, dicht doen. Terug op slot. Volledig nieuw. Dit is wraakroepend. Dit kan niet. Dat is een huis des aan Bekman. Zo, de board locks that were key to like. To speed games. I don't get that song. But I don't want the locks, I want the keys, of course. I mean, just, just because, because can. So from that tiny video, we lifted a couple of stills. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work better. I think that's the money shot. So it's kind of straight on. And if you look at this key head, well, you guys are not from Europe, but if you know your European keys, you go like, that's the BKS. Same as the quick set we, we, we did in, the, in, in the, the American story, that's the BKS. And so the dimensions of that key are known. Well, at least from this part. And we know what the possible dimensions are from this. Uh, this is basically the BKS style sheet. So here's your head. These are the positions where the pins can be. And these are the possible depths. Right? So we took this picture and compared it with this style sheet and did a guesstimate and came up with this one. So we assumed, or well we thought, that this would be the key to all Belgian street camps. But again, of course, I'm a sports picker. I'm not allowed to pick a lock that I don't own or have explicit permission from the actual owner. To, to try this. I'm pretty sure that's out the window because they're never going to give permission for me to try that. So we bought a speed cam. <laughs> <coughs> and sure enough, this lock, uh, this key, opens all the Belgian speed cams. So maybe we shouldn't show it. <laughs> okay, showing keys, wrong idea. But actual, as an attacker, having physical, actually, possession of that key, only for a minute, that's the holy grail. Because some keys, I mean, we, you, you saw us copying keys, but, but most of it is done on known profiles. So on, on blanks that we had or could purchase. And, but some keys, um, well, some locks have a weird key shape. So the keyhole is, is, is all swervy and stuff. And some of those blanks you're not allowed to buy. So they're not going to sell to you because you don't have that special little permit or whatever. Um, so totally secure because nobody else can make a piece of metal in a certain shape, of course. <laughs> <coughs> uh, well, you can use a normal high-res CNC thingy for that. But this is actual, this is an uh, easy entry device. That's the name. Uh, it's a box that basically does the same as your key copying copying machine, just feel where the ridges are and drills that, and, or, or mill that. But this one takes it from a different angle, literally. It takes uh, brass slugs with nice smiley faces on it, and basically what it does, a normal key copying machine would feel this side and mill a piece of metal that way. What this one does is mills this side, so it mills the grooves on your key. This is uh, more close-up, so it actually mills those grooves. And then you end up with a blank key that you can cut on a normal key cutter, right? 
So and that doesn't take that long, but you still have, have to have that machine to decode it if you want to do it on the spot. That machine is not cheap, and for not cheap I mean for sports enthusiasts, it's a couple of thousand dollars. So for a hobby sport, that's, eh, that's an investment. But for a serious adversary, oh, it's a few grand, see if I care. But this is kind of high-tech-ish. It's not high-tech, but it's tech. We can get way more down to earth than that. Tin soldiers. How are these made? Anyone? Casting. Casting. Casting is the magic word I was going for. So you produce a mold and cast some liquid metal in there and then have it cool off so it's not liquid anymore and you come up with a working key. If your key is not that high tech, so the tolerances are okay-ish, not, not stupid high, but quite normal, you can take a piece of clay, dump your key in there, and if you play nicely and neat enough and take it off ever so slowly, you will end up with a mold that you can actually use for that. We did that in the kit on, on the kitchen uh, table and do it like there, and it works. If you need, if you have more serious locks, like this is an Asa Ablo here, uh, low tolerance lock, so a good one. Uh, for that, you can't use the normal clay, and uh, we used a two component uh, uh, component for that. And actually, the stuff that your dentist used to make uh, impressions from from how your teeth look, that's good stuff. It's quite expensive, so befriend a dentist. That's always good. <laughs> Because that stuff doesn't, doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't shrink or expand when heated so much. So that's brilliant stuff. Um, there are actually kit for sales. This is a uh, this is the clamp. That's a, this is normal clay, and this is well an investment, not stupid investment. This is baby powder, actually, because what you do is if you have a clay surface, you put the baby powder on there. Because otherwise, you put your key in, take it out, all the clay will stick to your. Uh, stick your key. So to get rid of the stickiness, that's it. So this is a low melting metal, uh, a candle, and just a device to put the clay in. And it works. It works. So you've seen this all doing in 60 James Bond movies, and it, this works as long as you don't have very good locks. And then you end up with even the, the, the weirder locks that, that a normal key cutter can't cope with, like these tubeless things, uh, this, this disc uh, uh, locks. I mean, it doesn't look the same, but the important bits do, and that works. And of course, if you, if you fuck up the, the, the casting bit, you still have a mold. So if, you're, if you do it neatly enough, you can try this over and over again, and of course you can remelt that one. So losing sight of your key for, I don't know, the better part of 20 seconds. So if you lose sight of your key for the better part of 20 seconds, you, you should consider those keys lost. And if you find them afterwards, you consider them a souvenir. Because <laughs> if you lose them in the wrong place, and the adversaries are watching, and sometimes you know that's the case, it's a goner. Because you don't know who's the, old, who's the other owner, owner of those credentials. Because that's what it is. Keys are credentials, right? This is the ID of Rob Gronkrijp. In the Netherlands, he's probably the most famous hacker that we have. He did stuff with, uh, he's, well, among others, he's one of the guys who made sure that we don't vote on voting machines anymore. <laughs> so, good stuff. He hacked the shit out of those. Perfect, good guy. So he's, he's, so he's a hacker. He's a, he's a good one, uh, so he knows security, I presume. So let's see how he would go for, this, for something like that. Dat het overal is. En dan wil het geval dat het 
zitten, want het station waar allerlei interessante dingen liggen. Uh, Schuilbunkers, uh, vreselijk spannend, zeker in die tijd van de geweldig. So then you have hackers in your nuclear bunker. <laughs> Fun stuff. What's wrong with this picture? It's a bit out of focus. There's no way in hell this is the actual key. That's a cabinet key. It's not an elevator key. But you didn't know that, did you? Showing this key instead of the actual key took nothing away from the story. The tension was there, the drama was there, and it kept there. And you just show them a prop, anything, right? So you can run the story, and you can show keys, and do not break security that way. So that works. So not showing keys, how to do that? Well, this is a key port labeled DEFCON because, well, they sell it also. And this is a, basically a box that you can slide your keys in and out. That's a neat idea, right? So if you want to use your keys, you slide it out. So at least if, if you have some, a, a lot of keys dangling about, you can't see them. What they do, you, they, they produce key blanks with a peculiar head that fits in here. You can slide it in and out. But of course, in order to know <coughs> what key blanks to ship, because they, they, they want your actual keys to be cut by your locksmith, but they do need to know which blanks you have. So of course they say, please send pictures of your keys to us and label them correctly. Like, this is the art studio, and that's my front door, and this is the vault, I don't know. Come on, guys. You're at a security conference. You're selling a security product to the uber paranoid, because, well, that's, that's what they are. And you tell them to do stuff like this. Well, actually, granted, in the fine print it does set, for added security, you can cover the tip of your cuts so we can't decode them. But that shouldn't be added security. That should be the default. Come on, guys. That shouldn't be in the fine print. So, well, so I think that's the wrong idea. So we kind of are catching on that this is a bad idea, right? A password should not be on a post-it on your console. That's wrong. And the same with punching in credit card numbers. I mean, a couple of years ago, in, in, in especially in Europe, well, that, that I know of, uh, we got some public information clips that said if you punch in your, your numbers, shoot it. Don't let other people know your PIN code. And, well, basically you don't type in your password like that if you know people are watching. And, well, for me the same goes with, with using keys. So you shouldn't spread around your key everywhere or pictures of your key everywhere. So this is wrong. We all agree on that. So I think this is wrong also. This is uh, please break in, please break dot in. <laughs> and what this guy did is basically make a, 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 a piece of software that, that, that looks at the Twitter feed and looks, does somebody say new key and has picture, then he puts it on this. So, cool, right? So we know that these key 
These keys uh, belong to a location in Fargo. I don't know how big Fargo is. But, of course, these are just links to the original Twitters. So if you click on these links, you end up at the original Twitter feed from the actual owner. And you probably can figure out where he lives. So you can end up with stuff like this. Tweet it to the outside world. And, of course, if you click that Trulog CA link, you'll get a map of where the actual geezer lives. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we can write some software that can compare this to Google Maps, right? Or to Street View, I mean. So, and yeah, that's a clear enough picture to actually open it. So, ah, so I think it's wrong. So from a picture alone, we can decode enough information from a key to actually open the lock. So we kind of want to know who's watching or if you are watched. Well, of course, with Google Glass, you can still, well, you could see people wearing obnoxious stuff on their head. But they're already working on Google contact lenses. And if you happen to live in London, there's a gazillion CCTV closed circuit cameras around. And they, they're getting better and better. I mean, their picture quality is better and better. You don't see them all. And I'm pretty sure all of you guys have a quite decent enough camera in their pockets. We call them telephones, but those are cameras and tracking devices, of course. But so who is watching? So you should be, when you use your metal password to open your door, shield it a bit, don't spread it around anywhere. I mean, same as people don't have a post-it password on the forehead, because that's what, basically that's what we're doing. Okay, one more tiny story, and then I'll leave you guys to it. This is a bad man. I know he's a bad man, because he's a killer. He got, actually, he got convicted for killing people, and he went to jail for it. And he walked out of jail. Because the design of the master key was printed on front of the prisoner's information handbook. A copy of that particular book was given to all inmates upon arrival of that facility. <clears throat> So showing keys information, even if it's a tiny bit, is wrong. So as always, security can be hard and security can be easy. But mostly it's quite easy to fuck it up. <laughs> and that's all I have. Any questions? <laughs> good? Okay, so the, the, the mail service I talked about uh, earlier is apparently for a year from now. Isn't that ironic? Okay, that's ironic, yeah. So basically mail fraud-ish. Yeah. Okay, cool, thank you. Sir? I have a process question. Hold on a second. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Thank you. It's a bit noisy here. There you go. Thank you. Uh, this is just a really dumb process question, but when you're doing uh, clay molding for keys, yes. um, is, when you're using baby powder, is the oil sticking to the key surface itself, or to like dirt and residue on the? I'm, I'm asking, if it, does it work? Does it work better if you if you solvent the keys really, really well beforehand? I have no idea whatsoever. Okay, you haven't actually so, done that part. No, I, I've, I've not used solvents on it, but if yeah. you use baby powder, uh, some will stick on, on on the clay. Well, most of it will stick on the clay. Okay. And so, because the clay is kind of sticky, mm -hmm. and what, what the baby powder does is get rid of that stickiness. That's okay. what it does. I mean, maybe there are other ways to do that, but it came with the kit, and it's dirt cheap, so it's like, blah, blah, blah. My only concern <laughs> with baby powder is that... Uh, well, it's, it's white powder, so I wouldn't take it through customs, but... <laughs> it, also, if you're trying to do this fast, it's going to leave, like, solvent evaporates, baby powder sprinkles Okay, everywhere. true, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure, you, you can... You can optimize the, the process, but we, we weren't going for covert, we were just going for proof of concept at that point. 
Okay. But, but yeah, sure, you're right. I mean, if, if you lose sight of your keys for 20 seconds and then you find it and it's all white and powdery, you're going to... Ah. Don't know what happened there. Yeah, could, could you move it to... Thank you. More questions? So, subway keys, fireman's keys, were those locks changed? Are there too many of them to change? What, what's the status of that? Well, like I said before, I'm not allowed to pick locks that I don't own. I don't own these, so officially there's no way for me to actually tell that. Well, first, I do not live in New York, and I allegedly do not have possession of these keys. <laughs> so so, so I, I don't know. I think not. Like, I, is this vulnerability even being reported? Is there anyone that cares about it? I mean, yeah. it's been reported in several newspapers. But it's a shitload of locks. Yeah. And, of course, before this story ran... Uh, there are quite a lot of firemen in New York. And they don't all have their personal set, but they can get hold of them. And some of these keys are, even if the building is not on fire, are quite handy. So you're sharing a secret with a couple of thousand guys. You can't share secrets with that amount of people. I mean, Snowden, someone... <laughs> With, if the group is big enough, you cannot share secrets. The group should be small. So from a security perspective, having, like I said before, from a security perspective, having master key distributed over a big group is a bad idea. From a safety perspective, it makes perfect sense. So it's, it's, it's a balance. It's the same with uh, end user usability and security. I mean, from a security standpoint, maybe a password this long would make sense. From a user perspective, not so much. So it's always a balance and a choice you have to make. But I'm pretty sure at least not all of the locks have been replaced. I'm pretty sure bulk of them still work. I know for a fact that the elevator key is still operational. Because actually, you can't just change out those locks. Because they're bound by code. The, the, the elevator code, I don't know what the term is, but the, the actual writing how a elevator key should look like clearly states this should be the key. This code should be the key. So to change all that paperwork, that's not going to happen overnight. So I'm pretty sure a bulk of it, if not all, will still work. But I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. There you go. Have you looked at ISO standards to see if uh, key information was revealed in there? ISO standards for what? So ISO standards for, I don't know, um, what is it, subway systems or gas I'm pumping? I'm not sure if gas those pumps. are ISO standards, but those are standards, yeah. I mean, the, the gas pumps, I have no idea. But for the, uh, for the elevators, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the standards, it, it's mandated this should be the key if you live in this area. Okay. Those would be under NFPA, That sounds familiar. I just didn't know the name. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Nope, never done. Thank you very much. <laughs>